Today on The Way Ramen, I'm taking a crack at the most popular style of ramen in the US, the spicy tonkotsu ramen. And I'm gonna use the Instant Pot to make this, so it's gonna save about six hours or so. So tonkotsu ramen is by far my weakest style of ramen for many reasons, mainly because I just don't make it too often. So I'm gonna just show you what I did for this one, mistakes and all, and at the end when I'm eating, I'll tell you my thoughts of what can be done to improve it. So I found these weird pork bones at my local supermarket. I think they're hip bones, and I've never tried to make ramen from hip bones. And I'll just tell you right now, these things suck. Uh, femurs, backbones, neck bones, even the skull. Any other pig bone is better than these. But anyways, because these bones seem so bloody, I'm just gonna soak them overnight in some water in the fridge. This will help draw out some of the myoglobin to help make the final soup a little bit more white. While those pork bones are soaking in the fridge, I made some noodles. So real tonkotsu ramen often uses low hydration noodles. I'm talking like under 30% hydration. And that style of noodle is actually very hard to make at home without the proper equipment. So I'm doing Ramen Lord's makeshift Hakata style noodle, which is a 35% hydration, lower kansui, higher gluten noodle. And the recipe is in his book, which I'll link in the description below. And this is probably your best bet for tonkotsu ramen noodles at home. The next day, the bones have given off a lot of their myoglobin from soaking in water overnight, so I'm gonna drain out this dirty water, rinse the bones, and then fill the pot back up with some clean water. I got this onto the stove, and then I'm gonna do a pretty aggressive pre-boil. These bones still look like they're gonna give off a lot of scum, and I was right, so I just kept skimming off the brown scum. The white scum is actually okay, until there was no more brown scum coming off. And once the bones kinda looked like this, I removed them from the pot to give them another rinse and cleaning. So when you're cleaning pork bones for tonkotsu, what you're actually looking to do is knock off any of the brown or black gunk that comes out of the bones. Some people use a brush to get them super clean, but I'm not that particular. I used to pull off the meat and stuff from the bones, but I've since learned that that's not really necessary to make a really nice soup. Just get them as clean as possible. So once I had all the bones clean, I put them into my Instant Pot. This is about 2.2 kilograms of bones, so I'm gonna add 3.5 liters of water. I'm also gonna add a small piece of pork trotter just to bump up the gelatin a little bit. Then I got this covered and pressure cooked this on high for 45 minutes. Once the pressure cooking was done, I let the Instant Pot naturally release and then I opened it up. I added another liter of water to the pot, then gave it a mix, and then added a few cloves of garlic, and then let this cook at a rolling boil to emulsify the soup for about another hour or so. What often makes tonkotsu not so white in my opinion is adding too many aromatics too soon. That's why I added the garlic after the pressure cooking. So anyways, I'm just gonna cook this at a rolling boil, constantly stirring it to make sure it's not burning at the bottom, until it reduces down to the consistency that I like. I let my soup boil for about an hour and a half, which is actually a little bit too long and the soup reduced a little bit too much. Probably an hour would have been better, but I pulled the bones here and then I hit this with an immersion blender to really lock in the emulsion. This is honestly what probably messed me up because the soup looked good to my eyes when it was boiling but then when I blended it it got a little bit too thick so probably should have added in a little bit more water to dilute it down again. Anyways after blending I strained the soup through a mesh strainer and if you use the blender technique there will always be some sediment, little bits of bones and meat that need to be strained out before you serve your soup. And it's fine to have a little bit of it because it has a lot of flavor actually but too much of it can make your soup feel gritty so I just kept straining out the best as I could and then throwing away the sediment as it kind of piled up. And when I had strained all the soup, this is what my tonkotsu soup looked like. I thought it looked pretty good, so I portioned it out into individual servings, and I just called it a day because this soup will last a couple of days in the fridge, so I decided to eat it the next day after I had made some chili oil for a spicy tonkotsu. But the next day I discovered a couple of issues. So one, the soup was just way too thick for my liking. Some people like thick tonkotsu, but I'm kind of a little fart, so I don't like it so thick anymore. And the second thing was there was still a lot of sediment in the soup, which wasn't what I was going for, so my mesh strainer just wasn't thin enough. So I decided to heat up all of the soup again, add some water to dilute it a little bit, and then strain it out again with a finer mesh strainer. And this sucks because you generally don't want to be reheating soup over and over. I should have just added more water the day before, strained it with a finer mesh strainer the day before, but I'm just trying to show you guys everything so you can learn from my mistakes as well. So once I got the soup heated up, I strained it out again, this time with a finer mesh strainer, and that picked up most of the sediment that the first mesh strainer missed. Again, it's not like you have to take out all the sediment. In fact, Japanese tonkotsu ramen often isn't as clean and white as it is in America for some reason, but yeah, it was just a little bit too much for my liking. So after that second straining, the soup actually did look a lot better. It was a lot creamier, 
lighter in color. And so this is actually what I wanted. Maybe still a little bit too thick, maybe it could have used a little bit more water, but still it was much better. So with the soup situation figured out, I started to make the Rayu chili oil to make this a spicy bowl of tonkotsu ramen. So first I'm gonna make a negi forward aroma oil. So I cut up some green onions, peeled some garlic, and cut up a small piece of ginger. Then I measured out 150 milliliters of canola oil and 50 milliliters of sesame oil. And then I got that into a pot and heat it up. When the oil was hot, I added in the aromatics, the green onion, the ginger, the garlic. Initially, I brought the heat up, and then once it started to kind of bubble a little bit, I dropped it back down, and then I added in some Sichuan peppercorns, and let that infuse for 45 minutes. And while the oil was going, I measured out 20 grams of Korean chili powder, and 10 grams of Ichimi togarashi. The chili mix isn't necessarily the best, it's just what I did at the time, so I'm curious to hear what your chili mix is for your rayu if you make it at home. I mixed this together and then added a small amount of water to moisten the chili pepper. This helps prevent the chilies from burning when you add the hot oil to it. After 45 minutes, I removed the aromatics from the oil and then turned up the heat. And while the oil was heating up, I moved the chili powder from the bowl to the pot and then I realized like, why didn't I just mix it in the pot in the first place? But anyways, and it seems like I was so concerned with not getting burned, I poured the oil and forgot to film it. But you just pour the oil over the chilies, I let that steep for a little bit, and then I strained it out like this. For spicy tonkotsu, you actually don't need to strain it out, but I plan to use this rayu for other things, so that's why I did that. Anyways, now that's pretty much it. So all that's left is to prep the toppings. So I'm gonna keep this fairly simple. Just some green onions, kikuragi woodier mushrooms that I rehydrated. I'm not frying these or anything. And some chashu. This is ramen large chashu recipe. I have a video for this somewhere on the channel. It's probably still my favorite style of chashu for most ramen. So I'll link it up in the description and in the corner. And with that, it's time to put it all together. So I got one serving of soup heated up in a pot. And when that was ripping hot, I dropped in my noodles into some boiling water and then cooked them for one minute. And while my noodles were cooking, I dropped in 20 milliliters of the simple shiotare and 300 milliliters of tonkotsu soup into a warmed bowl. And when the noodles were done, I strained them and shook off any extra water and then added them into the bowl too. Then I just topped this with the chashu, the green onion, the kikurage, and I poured about 10 milliliters of chili oil over the soup. And I didn't really like how it looked, so I kind of used my spoon to try to mess it up and make it look a little bit better. But that's pretty much how you make a bowl of spicy tonkotsu ramen in an instant pot. So I thought this bowl tasted pretty good. I think the biggest thing that could have been improved was the consistency of the soup. I think I just made it a little bit too thick again. And that's basically been my struggle with tonkotsu this whole time. But that's really nothing that a little bit of water can't help when you're reheating the soup. So if you're making this at home, just feel free to adjust your consistency with a little bit extra water. I also think the tare was a little bit lacking, but that was probably just because it just needed more MSG. Maybe one day I'll play around with a more dashi involved tonkotsu, but I think sometimes simple is best for ramen. And tonkotsu ramen I think should taste like pork. And I also forgot to film this, but try sprinkling a little bit of lemon pepper into tonkotsu. It's freaking great, and it's definitely worth a try if you've never done it before. Could not recommend it enough. But anyways, that's gonna do it for this one. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you all so much for watching and for all the support. I'm not a professional chef or anything, just a normal guy who enjoys making ramen and trying to get better at it. So thank you for joining my journey. Anyways, I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.